Welcome back to 40 TV. I'm your host, 40. Today I'm going to show you uh, Magic Lantern 7D EOS camera tool slash firmware uh, upgrade. So first things first, you're going to want to open up Magic Lantern's website. Actually, before we continue, let me note that uh, this uh, tool is not uh, warranted by Canon. So if you screw up your camera, um, Magic Lantern is not responsible and neither is 40 TV. <laughs> so do this at your own risk. I repeat, do this at your own risk. Okay, so now that we have Magic Lantern's website open, it's magiclantern.fm, you're gonna wanna scroll down to the news and you'll see first 70 alpha released. This is in alpha, so, but it is installed and working on my camera, which I'll show you in a second. Next, you're gonna wanna scroll down to the downloads and click on the download right here. If you do not have version 2.0.3 uh, firmware on your 7D, go ahead and update your firmware before applying this Magic Lantern uh, upgrade. Um, so once that's complete, I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this. For those of you who have Canon 5Ds, it's important to note that not all of the features that are available on the 5Ds Magic Lantern firmware are available on the 7D yet. So I'm gonna double click on the folder that it downloaded to. I'll double click on the zip file to extract the contents if it didn't already do that for you. Open up that folder and you'll see these two files. I'm gonna go ahead and browse to my uh, compact flash card that I use inside my Canon 7D. And you'll notice that I dragged in the FIR file and the Magic uh, Lantern or ML uh, directory into the root of my compact flash card. Once you've done that, then you're finished with this step. Now that we have the Magic Lantern firmware loaded onto our CF card, we can go ahead and switch on our camera. When we switch on our camera, we'll want to open up the menu. And inside the menu, navigate to firmware. Make sure that your firmware is 2.0.3 to get this current alpha to work on your Canon 7D. We're going to go ahead and click on uh, the set button to upgrade it. We'll go over to OK and press OK. This has to be done every time you turn on your camera as this is not currently loaded into any type of uh, uh, memory on the camera. It's just loaded into RAM, so it's volatile. As soon as the camera is turned off, it, it basically loses this information and needs to be reloaded. You'll notice on the top that we have audio meters uh, displayed. It shows us the amount of our CF card, our aperture, our shutter, our shutter speed, our ISO, what type of white balance, um, how much battery we have left, a histogram, a waveform, etc. We can access the Magic Lantern uh, menu by pressing the delete key. Inside the menu, we have several options, which can be navigated either from this button here in the top menu or pressing down to go through these uh, main menu tabs or by pressing this or uh, sliding this uh, dial here. We can uh, toggle on and off different features by pressing the set button. So if we press set here on audio meters, it turns them off. And if we press delete, we'll notice that the audio meters are now off on the top of the overlay. We can get back to the uh, menu by pressing the delete key. We can press set again to turn the audio meters overlay back on. And we can see some of the other options. If we scroll down here, we'll see that we can turn on zebra um, patterns. If we press the set button, it turns it on. And you'll notice that right now it's set to LumaFast over 70%. Um, as far as overexposure is concerned. We can adjust these settings by pressing on the Q button here. We can change the color space. Right now it's only set to monitor um, overexposure and that's because the color space is set to Luma fast. You can check the documentation for Magic Lantern to see the reasoning for this but basically the Luma fast color space only allows um, either overexposure or underexposure to be tracked one at, the, uh, one at a time. So if I wanted to change my overexposure setting, right now it's set to 70. Real quick, I'm going to exit out of the menu so we can see in this image all this red, solid red. This solid red is what's exposed at over 70%. Let's say I wanted to change it to 90%. And go back to the menu and press the delete key here. Uh, press the Q button to access the submenu for that particular uh, option. Scroll down to overexposure and press the set button. I'm going to keep pressing and keep pressing it and I reach 90%. Now I press the delete key to exit out of here and I'll notice no longer on the table I'm, I'm exposed um, 
uh, I'm not exposed over 90% on the table. However, some portions of this uh, sculpture are uh, overexposed or uh, exposed over 90%. Again, I can access the menu by pressing the delete key, the sub menu by pressing Q. If I press this, I can go all the way up to 100%. So now it's only going to show me things that are exposed over 100% or fully blown out. And we'll notice that there's a couple places on that lamp that, uh, or that sculpture that is the case. I'll press the delete key again. I'll press the set button to turn zebras off. And actually, it might have been focus peaking because if they were blinking, if we turn this off and we go back into zebras, we turn this on uh, and we exit this. Now we'll notice it doesn't look like anything is solid red. So it looks like, as far as we're concerned, uh, we're not overexposing any part of this image. Another thing that we can do, we can move our AF box here um, by pressing this button here. Um, and basically this AF box is going to control some of the features inside of uh, uh, Magic Lantern. Lantern. You'll also notice that once I move this, it has a little number here. This number 49 represents, if we come down here, our spot metering. So right now it's set to IRE 0 to 108. If I press the Q button, I can change um, what I want that to display. An RGB value, a percentage, 0 to 255, IRE minus uh, 1 to 101. I have it set to 0 to 108. This way you can gauge uh, the different uh, uh, spot uh, metering throughout your um, frame. Anyways, I'm going to exit out of here by pressing the Q button. That gets me out of the sub menu. I'll also notice that I have Magic Zoom um, set here. This can be turned on by um, uh, my focus ring as well as um, half shutter. So if I exit out of here, right now I have focus. Let me turn off the zebras, turn on focus peaking. I'll exit out of here by pressing the delete button. And now when I adjust the focus ring, you'll notice that I have uh, a zoom right here, a magic zoom. And if I bring this uh, lamp into focus, you should see uh, green lines on top and bottom of the magic zoom, letting you know that you're um, in focus. Of course, you'd want to zoom in here. And with focus peaking on, we'll be able to see what exactly part is in focus. Now, I don't know if you can see on the camera here, but there's some blinking dots around here that show you what's exactly in focus. So again, as I'm pulling focus here, there we go. Come on. There we go. So as you can see, it's now in focus. I can zoom out to frame my shot. I can also turn that off by pressing the delete key here. I can turn off magic zoom. I can also change its magnification level by pressing the Q. I can come down here right now, it's set to 2 to 1, it can be 3 to 1 or 1 to 1. I can also change what happens as far as the confirmation is concerned, whether I want it to show green bars. What is my trigger right now? It's set to uh, the focus ring as well as a half shutter uh, click press. And what size of the magic zoom do I want? I'm going to press the Q button, I can exit out of here. I can turn this off by pressing the set button or keep it on. Below I have crop marks. Crop marks uh, is an overlay to show the 16 by 9 uh, 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 view in my frame. So blocking out things that are not going to be recorded into my video. I can also change what type of crop marks I have. Do I want to have a ghost image on or off? Do I want to set up false color? Um, I can also uh, come in here and select what I want my histogram to show. What color space I want it to use. I can also set up my waveform here. Do I want it to be small? If I press the Q button, I can make it large. Now if I exit out of here, you'll notice I have a much larger um, waveform. I can go back to the menu by pressing the delete key. Access the submenu by pressing Q. I can go, uh, go back and make this the small. As you saw, there was an also an option for full screen. I'll go back to the main my menu by pressing Q. I'll scroll down. I have my vector scope, it's currently turned off, but I can turn it on by pressing the button here. There are no options uh, or submenus for the vector scope, so if I press Q, nothing happens. So I'll press the delete key to exit out. 
And I'll notice here, I have my vector scope to show me my color saturation values. I can go ahead and turn that off by pressing the delete key and coming back here and pressing set. There are a couple other options here in the top menu. Um, whether you want the time indicator once you start recording a video to show what time elapsed or have it off. So when I exit out of here and press the delete key, if I start recording, you'll notice that I have a time elapsed up here in the top right. This is showing me that it's currently recorded eight seconds of video. I also have fantastic audio metering that's being updated on the fly. Once I turn this off, my recording, we can go back into the menu. I can set whether I want to log uh, my data, um, if I want to stop recording by a certain amount of time. Again, this is the alpha firmware update from uh, Magic Lantern. They're testing this and having people test this across as many cameras as possible to make sure this is stable as possible. Um, as they find out things are able to be run, because the Canon 7D operates differently than the 5D, so as they find out different abilities are able to be run on this firmware, they'll continue to uh, enable more features. So, but you can have this stop recording after a set amount of time. Um, trap focus. Uh, if you come into this screen right here, into the focus screen, base, it's going to show you that I'm using a 2470 lens. It's currently set to a, a, a f4. And it shows you your focus distance. So my focus distance is 86 centimeters. My depth of field near is 77 uh, centimeters. And my depth of field far is 90 centimeters. If I exit out of this by pressing the delete key, oops, and I change my uh, f-stop, let's say down to 2.8, and I press the delete key again, all of this stuff is going to update based on um, my uh, based on my aperture as well as my current um, zoom level. So right now I'm at 24 millimeter um, as far as the lens is concerned and an f2.8. My depth of field near is set to 79 centimeters and my depth of field far is set to, it looks like 90 centimeters. Again, this, is, this will all update. So if I zoom in here and I go to 70, I press delete. I'll notice that this update says, says I'm at 70 millimeters at f2.8. It says my depth of field near is 85 centimeters and my depth of field uh, far is set to 80 centimeters. So this is a handy little tool. Again, we can go and we can change the way that the brightness is set here. Um, this is the display for the Magic uh, Lantern firmware. We can change the color scheme. Right now it's set to default. We can have it a dark gray, a bright gray, dark gray, dark red, dark green. I like default actually. Um, we can change the saturation and the contrast here in the menu. Um, some preferences. This talks a little bit about uh, your camera. You can run benchmarking tests and stability tests as far as uh, Magic Lantern is running on your camera. It also shows you the your CMOS temperature. Right now mine is 181. Um, and then info about uh, how to use the Magic Lantern or help firmware. It talks about the set button, the cue button, the delete button, and navigating the menus. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. A quick note, this Magic Lantern firmware is obviously not supported by Canon. So installing it or running it side by side, you do so at your own risk. Um, it is possible to break your camera. However, this has been running fine. I've had it on there for a day now. I've played with it a little bit, and uh, these features seem pretty fantastic. Again, if you guys like my content, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hey guys, one more note before I go. If you have any questions, back on the Magic Lantern webpage where you downloaded the firmware, you can go over here to documentation. That documentation has uh, information about installation, the user guide, as long, along with some other pertinent information. Some of this stuff is not available for the 7D firmware yet, but hey, that's where we come in. If you find this tool useful and you want to see further advancements, scroll down until you see um, the ability to donate some money to Magic Lantern. Our donations go to furthering the development of this firmware tool, which is free. So definitely, if you like it, consider donating. Anyways, guys, till next time, I'm out.